want to talk about does the Bible tell us that we must be religious? I have a lot of brothers, well actually a few brothers, that tell me that uh, if I'm talking about God or Jesus or the scriptures in the Bible, then I'm religious. And I have to uh, beg to differ that, okay? So I'm going to be doing something a little bit different today than I have in my last uh, four or five live streams. I'm going to talk about religion from the world standpoint and what the Bible has to say about that. So uh, how is religion defined? So uh, religion is a noun, okay? And uh, from the dictionary, uh, um, it has a definition that says that belief in the worship of a supernatural controlling power, especially a personal God or gods, and gods is a little case and God is uppercase. So let's talk about that for a little bit. Uh, um, religion, the belief in the worship of a supernatural controlling power. Personally, I don't think God is controlling because he gives us a free will. So uh, let's look at a couple points underneath the definition of, of what the dictionary says religion is. A particular system of faith and worship. A particular system. Okay, what is a system? How do you define a system? A pursuit of interest in which someone ascribes supreme importance. A pursuit or interest. Okay, I'm not seeing... Uh, anything in the uh, dictionary that says that we must be religious. So my friends, what I like to do is I like to share uh, um, the uh, 74 B's, okay? <clears throat> I believe if we're commanded to be religious, Jesus is going to tell us in his words, okay? So I'm going to read the 74 B's, and what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to pick up on a topic that says uh, we are called to be religious. So here again, my friends, are we called to be religious? I'm going to read 74 B's that are part of the commands of Jesus Christ. So we're going to start uh, with uh, command number one, be exceedingly glad. I don't see anything about religion there. Number two, be reconciled to a brother. Number three, be perfect. Number four, be wise as serpents. Number five, be harmless as doves. Number six, be ready for Christ's coming. That's not religion either, my friends. Number seven, be content with your wages. Number eight, be merciful as God. Number nine, be like faithful servants. Number ten, be thankful. Again, my friends, I'm looking for a, uh, a scripture command that says we must be religious. And so far, I've read uh, through uh, the first uh, ten B's and I'm not finding it. So let me keep reading here. Um... Number 11, be at peace among selves. Number 12, be patient towards all people. Number 13, be no partaker of sin. Number 14, be sober and hope. Number 15, be sober and pray. Number 16, be sober, grave, tempered, sound in faith, charity, and patience. Again, I'm not seeing any definition that says that we must be religious. Let's look at command number 17 in the uh, 74 B's. Be sober, love husbands and children, and teach young women. Number 18, be sober-minded and teach young men. Ni number 19, be in behavior as becoming to saints. Number 20, be discreet, chastened, keepers at home, good, obedient, and teach this to young women. Number 21, be ready to give an answer of your hope that is in you. Again, I'm not seeing any to be religious. Number 22, be of good cheer. Number 23, be baptized. Number 24, be converted. Number 25, be transformed. Number 26, be kind of brotherly love one to another. Number 27, be fervent in spirit. Number 28, be patient in tribu tribulation. Number 29, be uh, given to hospitality. Number 30, be afraid if lawless. Number 31, be no idler. Number 32, be followers of Paul as he followed Christ. Again, my friends, I don't see any scripture in here that tells us that we have to be religious. So let me keep reading here. Um, number uh, 33, be followers of God. Number 34, be followers of the faithful and patient. Number 35, be not children in understanding. Number 36, be men in understanding. Number 37, be steadfast. Number 
38, be unmovable. Number 39, be always abounding in God's work. Number 40, be strong in the Lord. Number 41, be of good comfort. Number 42, be of one mind. Number 43, be separate from the unclean. Number 44, be renewed in the spirit. Number 45, be angry and sin not. Number 46, be tender-hearted one to another. Again, my friends, I'm on number 46, and I don't see any command here that says we are to be religious. Number 47, be filled with the Spirit. Number 48, be like-minded. 49, be one of accord. Number 50, be anxious for nothing. Number 51, be an example to believers in word, conversation, charity, spirit, faith, and purity. Number 52, be a partaker of Christian sufferings. Number 53, be gentle to all people. Number 54, be apt to teach. Number 55, be instant in season and out of season. Number 56, be careful for maintaining good works. Again, I'm looking for a, a command scripture that says be religious. I'm not finding it, friends. Number 57, be content with what you have. Number 58, be doers of the word. Number 59, be afflicted and mourn. Number 60, be patient till Christ comes. Number 61, be holy in conversation and your behavior. Number 62, be pitiful. Number 63, be courteous. Number 64, be examples of the flock of God, not Lord over it. Okay, remember that command right there is pretty important. Number 64, be examples of the flock of God, not Lord over it. Again, that does not tell us to be religious. Number 65, be subject one to another. Number 66, be clothed with humanity. Number 67, be sober. Number 68, be vigilant. Number 69, be mindful of prophecies and commandments. Number uh, 70, be diligent to be found in peace. Number 71, be diligent to be without spot and blameless. Number 72, be faithful to death. Number 73, be watchful, strengthening self. Number 74, be zealous and repent. My friends, I did not see one scripture at all in the commands that Jesus uh, taught his disciples to go out and tell us. I did not see one scripture at all that says that we are to be religious. So I'm going to solve this problem uh, where everybody thinks that we are called to be religious. We are not called to be religious. And those people that think that we are need to understand that there's a difference between religion and relationship. So let's look at it again. Let's look at what religion is according to the definition that the world gives us, okay? How is religion defined? It's a noun, okay? The belief in the worship of a superhuman controlling power, especially a personal God or gods. The God that I serve is not a controlling power. He gives us a free will. Okay, let's, let's look at some bold points under what the world religion says. A particular system of faith and worship. A particular system. I don't have to have a particular system in order to have a relationship with God. A pursuit of interest in which somebody ascribes supreme importance. My God is important to me, but it doesn't tell me I don't have to pursue that. I have to be in a right relationship with God. So I'm going to ask you this question now. I talked about religion and I read 74 commands that told us that we are not to be religious. 74 commands that Jesus taught us. And not one of those commands tell us to be religious. Why is that? Why is that? Okay, so what I like to do is I like to tell you the difference between religion and relationship, and I want you to get the point here. So how about a relationship with God? How is it defined? Okay, I'm going to ask you some questions here. Devote yourselves to unselfish religious deeds. Does that give us a relationship with God? Become a better person so that God will accept you. Does that get us to religion? Okay, how you may be surprised that none of these things will work, but God has made it very clear in the Bible how we can know Him. So none of the religious traits that are defined from the world standpoint get us a relationship with God. We must understand this. We're going through a tough time right now, and if we do not have that relationship with God through Jesus Christ, my friends, we're all going to suffer. It's important you understand the difference between religion and relationship. Just because I'm a man of God does not make me religion. Because I study the scriptures, it does not make me religion. religious. So what does it, okay? 
So I want to talk to you about four principles that show me how to have a relationship with God. Here we go. Principle number, number one. God loves you and offers a wonderful plan for your life. That's principle number one. So how do we get there? Okay, God's love. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. None of that scripture that I just read talks about being religious, okay? But this is God's plan, right? So Christ speaks and he says, I come that they might have life and might have it abundantly, that it might be full and meaningful. That's not religion, that's a relationship. Okay, let's, let's, let's move on. Why is that most important? Why is that most people are not experiencing the abundant life? Okay, let me ask you that question again. Why is it that most people are not experiencing the abundant life? Okay, because let's look at principle number two. All of us sin and our sin has separated us from God. Okay, we are sinful. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We were created to have fellowship with God, but because of our stubborn self-will, we choose to go our own independent way and fellowship with God was broken. This self-will, characterized by an attitude of active rebellion or passive indifference, is evident of what the Bible calls sin. So if you think you have a, a religion versus a relationship, is your religion a form of sin? I'm going to ask that question again. If you think you have a, relation, a religion versus a relationship, is that religion a form of sin? Let's keep reading. We are separated. The wages of sin is death. Spiritual separation from God. If I only have a religion, my friends, I don't have a relationship. This is important. We may perish because of this. We may have loved ones that may perish because of this uh, virus situation that's going on. If you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, we need to talk about this. Okay? So this uh, diagram illustrates that God is holy and people are sinful. A great uh, gulf separates us. The arrows illustrate that uh, we are continually trying to reach God in abundant life through our own efforts, such as a good life, philosophy, or religion. But we inevitably fail when we practice religion. So the law, the third law explains the only way to bridge this gulf. So when we're trying to be religious, we're trying to go through that uh, gulf or that distance with an arrow and we're trying to shoot an arrow at God and we're trying to do that by being religious. We can't do that, okay? Let's look at principle uh, number three. Jesus Christ is God's only provision for our sin. Through him we can know and experience God's love and plan for our life. And this is Jesus' story here. He died in our place. God demonstrated his own love towards us in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. My friends, if Christ died for us, is that a relationship or is he telling us to be religion? I want you to think about this for a moment because he rose from the dead. Okay, Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. He appeared to Peter, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 people. My friends, Jesus had a relationship with his followers. He did not tell them to go out and be religious. He is the only way to God. Religion will not get you to God. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Okay, now we have a, a diagram illustrating that God has bridged the gulf which separates us from him by sending his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross in our place to pay the penalty for our sins. Now we have a relationship and not a religion. It's not enough just to know these three principles. Let's look at principle number, num number four here. We must individually receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Then we can know and experience God's love and plan for our lives. My friends, this is not about religion. Get it through your head when people tell you that you're religion, that you're a religious person, say, there is no command in the scripture that tells me I have to be religious. 
okay, but a lot of them point to being in a right relationship with Jesus Christ. We must receive Christ. As many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. If I have the right to become a child of God, do I have a religion or do I have a relationship? We receive Christ through faith. By grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not as a result of work or religion that no one should boast. When we receive Christ, we experience a new birth. Okay, We receive Christ by personal invitation. A personal invitation. If, if you go out and uh, you go to church or you're sitting at the bar, if that's your thing, and uh, somebody walks up to you and they start chatting with you and they say, Hey, I'd like to be your friend. Is that religion? Because if that's religion, then what we do when we study the Word of God and when we go to church, it's the same thing, right? But it's not the same thing. If somebody comes up to you in a bar or at the gym or at the church and they say, I'd like to be your friend, that's starting a relationship. That's not religion. We receive Christ by personal invitation and Christ speaking here. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him. That's a personal relationship, okay? That is not religion, okay? Receiving Christ involves turning to God from self-repentance and trusting Christ to come into your lives to forgive our sins and to make us what He wants us to be. Just to agree intellectually that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that He died on the cross for your sins is not enough. Okay? I'm going to read this again. It's important that you understand this. Receiving Christ involves turning to God from self-repentance and trusting Christ to come into your lives to forgive our sins and to make us what he wants us to be. Okay, how many of you that are watching this have a little brother? How many of you that are watching this have a little brother? Okay. Would you like your little brother to learn from you? If you have a trade that you're trying to teach him, would you like him to learn from you? That's basically what this scripture is saying. Just to agree intellectually that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he died on, on the cross for your sins is not enough, my friends. We have to have a relationship with him and not a religion. Nor is it enough to have an emotional experience. You receive Jesus Christ by faith as an act of the will. So there's the difference between your religion and your relationship. It's an act of the will. If religion is a, a ritual of studying the Word of God and believing in God or believing in Jesus, and you call that religion, I don't call that religion. I call that a relationship because it's an, an examination of the free will of who we are in Christ Jesus to have that relationship. Okay, When anybody tells you, that you're a religious person, I want you to question that. Are you religious? And I want you to know one thing. Religion is a man-made ritual of rules and regulations. Having a relationship with Jesus Christ is not that way. Okay? Jesus Christ says, You do know which way to follow me, for I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except through me. That's Jesus' words. It, nowhere in that scripture did Jesus say, you must be religious to follow me to have access to God. Did he ever say that? No, he did not. So the Bible only talks about religion in one area of scripture, okay? It's found in James 1, verse 27, and I like the easy to read version because children can understand that. The worship that God wants is this. Okay, you can change worship to religion, okay? The religion that God wants is this. Caring for orphans and widows who need help and keeping yourself free from the world's evil influences. This is the kind of religion, it says worship here, that God accepts as pure and good. So where does religion come into your mind thinking that because you want to follow Jesus and you want to have access to God and you're studying your scriptures and you're going to church, why do you think that that's religious? And why do you think that somebody that's doing that is a religious person? Okay, I have to stop you in your tracks, especially those people that I love, and say, if you think that religion is studying the Bible, 
going to church, being around follow, followers of Jesus Christ is religion, I'm begging to differ. Because God says that the only act of worship is to take care of the orphans and the widows. Okay, is that religion? Yeah, that's a service that only God sees as religious. Okay, I just read 74 commands that Jesus taught his disciples about be. Okay, be something, be this, be that. Okay, rewatch this uh, video. Find out what those are, okay? And you can also watch my playlist series on the commands that Jesus taught his disciples. Nowhere in the commands that Jesus taught his disciples did he say anywhere that we need to go out and be religious, okay? All the commands are based on uh, relationships, on how to be healthy in a relationship. That's it, my friends. When you're dealing with this coronavirus and you're dealing with people that you love that are sick and that people that are dying around you, we have no idea where this is going to go, okay? And we cannot have a, re a religion in order to get through this. We have to have a relationship. We have to understand that there's a difference between religion and relationship, okay? The only religion that God allows is to is to have us take care of the widows and the orphans. That has nothing to do with reading my Bible. That has nothing to do with following Jesus. That has nothing to do with my access to God. That has nothing to do with, with me going to church to, and, and to study the Word of God. I had a brother that told me, if you're bringing up Jesus or God, or you're bringing up the Bible, then you're religious. I hate to beg the difference, but that's not true. Okay? So I must have just shared about 25 minutes on the difference between religion and relationship. So I hope you rewatch this video often and I hope you go to my YouTube channel and watch those uh, commands that Jesus taught his disciples to go out and teach all the nations to observe and obey. Which commands do we observe? Okay, you're going to have to read them. You're going to have to listen to them. Which ones do we obey? Again, you're going to have to listen to them. You're going to have to... Uh, read them. Why did I put a playlist series on my YouTube channel that talks about the great commands of Jesus Christ? First of all, I want you to hear them, and then I put the slides on the screen so you can see them. It says in Matthew 7, 24, be like the wise builder who hears the words, so you hear with your ears, but you also hear through your eyes because you're reading it and you're taking it in. But it also says to put those words into action. So when we observe and obey the 1,050 commands of Jesus, we put them into action. We hear them because I'm reading them all to you on video. Okay? 